Uh, hi everyone. So uh, thanks uh, for coming uh, to my talk. Uh, I'm uh, here talking about uh, large uh, scale distributed video processing with OTP. Uh, that's how we process a video at Tubi. So first of all, uh, I just want to introduce uh, Tubi to everyone. What is Tubi? Um, Tubi is a video streaming service, uh, much like uh, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. And uh, if you go to uh, one of the uh, uh, any platform that we support it. Uh, we support over uh, 25 different devices. If you go there and check out our app, you will immediately find out uh, the big difference. Uh, we are 100% free. Um, we don't charge any type of payment, uh, no subscription, no, uh, no credit card at all. So uh, the other difference, uh, the other difference that may uh, not very, very obvious to you at first is that we have a massive content library. Uh, right now we have over 20,000 movie and TV shows live on our site. Um, we, uh, how do we make money? We run video ads. Uh, so from video processing front, uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges. Um, Number one challenge is that a lot of times we got very high quality sources. Um, if they are from partner, our partners, studios, uh, sometimes it's lossless, sometimes it's very minimal compressed. Uh, a single file could sometimes range from 50 gigabytes to 600 gigabytes. And also sometimes it comes with a different uh, video format, different container and a different uh, video codec. The second challenge that's that we have um, is uh, the, the massive content we need to ingest. Uh, sometimes studios wants to give us content, uh, you know, uh, at the beginning of the month, sometimes we got more content around holidays, and sometimes we just need to batch reprocess a lot of content because of kind of, uh, because of a encoding improvement on top of, uh, uh, on, the, on the video transcoding side. Huh. The third challenge that we have is that <coughs> we need to support over 25 different devices. Uh, sometimes uh, the device is uh, um, memory constrained devices. It has a certain amount of memory on that device. Sometimes the network of uh, the, the, the user is not ideal, low bandwidth situation. Uh, we need to be able to support all the, all the video playback on all different devices that we support. So how do we, how do we tackle this? Um, we uh, developed our own way of uh, parallel processing of a video. So first, uh, we slice video into small, small chunks. And then we fan out all the small chunks to a cluster uh, to do CPU heavy transcoding. Se after it's finished, the second step is that we are going to fan in all these small chunks into a single node uh, to do uh, I/O heavy concatenation, or you can see uh, assemble. We can we will assemble those small video chunks together, and then the third step is we're going to uh, do some network uh, heavy stuff uh, to upload the video uh, to a cloud storage. So um, you can uh, a, a one video, just one video would. Uh, Break into thousands of uh, tasks uh, to run in the to run in the cluster at at the same time, and sometimes uh, and most of the times task, tasks have dependencies. Um, so if video needs to be all the chunks need to be finished the transcoding before it uh, got assembled to a huge video, a same 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 file, and after that you can after that you can uh, upload to cloud storage. So uh, so I just want to show one example here. Uh, so this is our, I, I, can, I can show it in a better way. So, so this, is, uh, this is the example, uh, a simple example that we have. Um, so uh, the, this task could break down to a few, uh, several different, of uh, one video break down to several uh, uh, different tasks and different tasks as dependencies. So I'm going to show you a uh, more uh, complex example. So this is a more complex example. Uh, so 
This is uh, one just a transcode of one video we break down to, I believe uh, we have a 681 tasks here, uh, to throw it in all the tasks into a cluster and uh, do other uh, things. Uh, and uh, that's how do we process the video uh, in cluster. Um, yeah, let me go back to this. Uh, so then the question uh, is that why do we elixir slash on OTP? So the very first thing is that supervisor um, we can, supervisor can monitor the health of a child process and it restart as needed. So as you can see on the previous graph, at any given moment we have thousands of attacks uh, are running at the same time. So fault tolerance and self-healing is critical to us. Just early on OP, ODB just make it very easy to make it happen. So we first start a server, gen server to start processing things. And this is a normal exit, that means it's finished. And uh, we'll just uh, uh, tell the higher level manager it's finished. This is abnormal, uh, this is an abnormal exit that we will either retry um, if it's not uh, getting to the, it's not, fin it's not getting to the restart uh, limits yet. Otherwise we're going to tell the upper management the, f the task has failed, we either need to, uh, you know, a reper we either need to maybe re-download the sources, re, re request the sources, or maybe uh, inform uh, human on our uh, content operations side to actually uh, get in different, uh, getting a new source. Uh, so the second reason, the second reason that uh, Elixir and AllDB really helps is the cluster is built in. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we sometimes comes, uh, need to process a batch of content and uh, we need to, uh, so Erlang OTP makes it very simple to add in a new node. Just a few lines of code, you will get a new node. That would increase your, uh, increase our uh, processing power um, when we, whenever we need. So this is um, just a few lines of code, you've got a new node. And the second is that uh, the remote process is seamless. Uh, so just a simple RPC call right here. Uh, you can see um, it's actually started a, 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 a new task or, or a new gen server at actually a different node. Um, so this is, uh, this is how it looks like in real uh, life. So uh, this is a few months back. Uh, at that time, we need to process a batch of content. Uh, so we finished processing 900 plus videos in 24 hours. So we there at at any given time we have over 700 CPU cores running at the full speed. We can even go faster if we add more nodes to this cluster, and it's average about 1.87 minutes for each video processing. Uh, just so so uh, each video it's uh, a full length movie or a episode. So sometimes. Uh, you, you, if you do that on your local laptop, it will take you um, uh, several hours to process one hour of content. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's all I have uh, I want to present. Um, yeah. Any questions? Hey, could you describe a little bit more about how you do the I.O. heavy stuff? Uh, so for uh, so I.O. heavy stuff, uh, there's no particular thing that we do. The only thing that we know is an I.O. heavy thing. Uh, so we just uh, moved uh, all this I.O. heavy thing to one node. So all the I.O. so all the ch small chunks is actually sitting on the same disk, sitting on the one machine, not a remote disk you are going to fetch from different places. It's already there. So because we know it's I.O. heavy thing, so we moved everything to the single node first. It's still done with Erlang? Uh, the, no, no, uh, no, it's, it's done by through an uh, uh, external program to do the, to do, actually we use uh, FMPAC to, uh, and other things to uh, process our videos, but uh, it looks like just manage the cluster and uh, balance the result, the resources. Okay. Any more? Any one more? Uh, could you speak a little more about how you balance the resources? Like how do you balance the tasks in the cluster? Oh, very, very good question. So uh, we, 
we classify different tasks into different uh, 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 resources. For example, transcoding is CPU heavy. Uh, uh, the one that we mentioned, the concatenation is L heavy. So uh, we, we built our own uh, resource management tool uh, to uh, distribute different tasks. We know how much CPU power a task would take, and we, uh, we uh, build a uh, the source resource management on our own. Uh, to monitor the whole cluster resource uh, uh, resource uh, uh, resource situation and the distributed task in that way. That's our own. We build that our own. Yeah. How do you interact with FMPEG? So, sorry. How do you interact with the library uh, for video processing? Uh, we FMPEG? use a port. Is it like bindings? Uh, no, knowledge? just just the using Erlang port to talk with these uh, external processes. Oh, okay, okay. Any one more? So that, like a layer, like how do you keep the like state of the, like a, for example, like a supervision tree, like if you need to like restart the, the owning like supervisor, then you need to rebuild the whole like a, stage of the running resources. Like yeah, what is the process and storage? Oh, very, very good question. Because you see the elasticity is important to us. Our class can go up and down. Uh, we know that, so we persist the state into database. Okay. Anyone more? Any questions? No? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.